Hey guys, there's just so much to say, so much to type, so much to write, so much to put into like a storybook at this point. When I see everyone's comments and posts, I want to say so much that I decided to upload this video post to tell you uh, that I uh, just about 100% recovered from all these symptoms that I'm hearing about. So I just want to give you the details how, how I did that because uh, it's possible that you could make a full recovery or at least recover 90% get your life back. I say I'm about 90, 90 something percent that actually. As you can see, first things first, we need to slow down. This Christmas tree behind, this is symbolic that I'm taking my life slow. The holidays ended a few weeks ago and my tree is still up. I started taking things slow. I was very active before all this happened to me. I was a very active person. So we'll start with that. My story goes, I was active my whole life is being, uh, I'm into my health, physical education. Basically, uh, my yard is like a gym. Ever since the pandemic, I started working out outside in the yard. But uh, I may have, may have done too much leaning back on the physio ball, you know, the big rubber ball stretching and stuff. They say that you could get loose crystals in your head as you lean back like this. Don't do that at the salon for prolonged periods of time. If you're leaning back, they're washing your hair. Let's say you're at the barber or something or doing exercises like I was. Let's just say that's the possibility why you got BPPV, which some of, which some of us have. But we all eventually inherited these vestib vestibular migraines or what we're trying to figure out with these vestibular migraines is why we're in this group in the first place, how this started and how it ends. It's going to be different for everybody, but let's try to end these vestibular migraines once and for all. Slow down, take things slow. That's first things first. If you're very active, slow down the activity. If you're feeling dizzy, swaying, rocking, vertigo, spinning. Vertigo is a symptom of something else that we know. And the migraines, they come with it. They don't. Either way. They're calling it vestibular because something's off in our balance system with our ears, right? I had the loose crystal diagnosis at the ENT. They uh, they said maybe it's... Well, the primary doctor first saw me and said, let's do an EKG. I couldn't even lay back on his table that night. This is the same night I started feeling things spinning. And I was leaning back on my couch that night and I started feeling the spinning. And that's when I said, oh shit, what did I do? He said, you probably have loose crystals. Go to an uh, ENT, you might need vestibular therapy. I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. I didn't know crystals, what the fuck is he, I don't know. But, became my diagnosis and he was right. Because I couldn't even lie down for the EKG that night. Every time I laid down, I would get the spinning when I'm laying flat on my back. Even went back to him a second time. The day I came out of his office, uh, I was ready to drink my uh, Ensure shake, you know, nutritional shake, leaning my head back in the street, started spinning. I grabbed hold of a telephone pole or a pole light light post and let everything stop spinning. I said, I got to go to the CNT. The doctor's right. This is right outside the, uh, the doctor office that day. I made the appointment, went to the ENT. They did the Epley maneuver that some of us had before where they're trying to move the crystals back in the right canals. It seemed to work because I never got that spinning sensation again, but I had dizziness starting to... You know, it was starting to become part of my, unfortunately, my uh, physiology or my anatomy. It was starting. It was residual dizziness since that diagnosis that didn't go away, that turned into 24 dizziness. So something was going on with my ears. I knew that much. But they checked them. They got the wax out. If I had wax, that was out. They were clear. I didn't have an infection. I didn't have fluid. Maybe it was the crystal. That was my diagnosis. Okay. Bottom line is, I wasn't getting migraines yet. But I tried to stay active. That was a bad idea. You could do activity just like vestibular therapy teaches you to get to a threshold, come back to your baseline. Which means you're testing your balance with these activities that are trying to desensitize your eyes to motion to get your vestibular system uh, to understand what's going on because it's it's going haywire. So you're using your eyes to take over for your vestibular system in vestibular therapy 
after two sessions, I even got the idea where I didn't even have to go back to it. Me personally, I was such an active person in general that I started doing and even applying the same things that they were doing for my eye therapy there to get my balance back. I was applying it in my home gym outside. I was, I got boxing equipment, speed bag, and I was using the eye hand coordination to try to like figure out what they were saying. I'm like, yeah, if my eyes are getting used to the shakiness, eventually my brain will get adjusted and my eyes will take over for the air system. That's what vestibular therapy does. And eventually that rocking, swaying sensation, feeling like we're on a boat will dissipate and go away because our eyes took over and the brain relearns everything. It's it's a it's pretty extraordinary how powerful our brains are and what they could what it does to us, good and bad, and how it could heal itself. In my case, I think because I remained active and I did stay active enough to walk not my usual ten miles, but two miles felt a little dizzy even one mile go back home head home rest again take things slow the christmas tree theory the holiday it's ended but not for us take things slow i wanted to walk so badly i was so used to being active but i also i did my one or two mile don't just sit around you you can't lose your ability to know how to walk through lumps and bumps in the road and even flat ground if we're not feeling uh if we're not feeling like we have balance it's our ears are just they're just fucking with us our vestibular system is just messing with us and we're gonna have to get used to and desensitize ourselves to motion once again like we're a baby learning how to walk all again all over again and that's okay we might fall more no no it's not okay to fall so don't overdo it I'm not a little baby that's only two feet tall falling to the ground. Some of us got to be very careful. Some of us are more elderly. Some of us even have to continue the vestibular therapy because they'll provide a support, maybe a, rail, a railing to do our exercises. Me personally, I went out there and I just did it, walked, and then I stopped. I stood on one foot or did whatever exercise they taught me in phys uh, vestibular therapy. I learned a lot more from YouTube, actually, and I applied it during my walks. I stopped. I felt like I was off balance, maybe with one foot in front of the other. I tried my little exercises, walked a little bit more, said, I better go home. Uh, that was it. Went to my dizzy threshold. I said, okay, that was enough exercise for the day. Went back home. Cut the activity, slow it down, but don't stop activity completely. You need to get to a threshold and back to a baseline to get the brain back used to get it back used to the uh, motion. Okay, so that's the number one thing first that I wanted to tell you guys and share with you that started to cure my vestibular system as my eyes took over and my brain took over for the problems. But the second most important thing that I was able to pull off and do personally for myself that I realized was a very big trigger for me, so I had no choice, was the food triggers. The food triggers were real, it wasn't just a myth, it was actually causing my dizziness. How the hell would I know if I'm already if I'm already eating the same shit every day and I had the 24 dizziness already? How the hell do you know what's causing it? Because you're dizzy all the time. Okay, I eat an apple. I'm already dizzy. Oh, it must have been the apple. <laughs> There's no way of knowing unless you eliminate and tear away the layers of the food until you're not dizzy anymore. And I'll be providing the link the link to the book that helped me with that problem. The Dizzy Cook, which we're all talking about here in this group. That's one book that I bought and studied. And let me tell you, it was correlating with what was happening to me. The book, yep, those foods were causing dizziness because when I eliminated it, eventually I was starting to get migraines and it was too late. I should have bought that book sooner and eliminated food sooner. Eventually, all this activity and still eating the same shit every day. I started getting those neck problems that we all have because vertigo in general it's giving us a bad neck because we're trying to stay steady and we're doing all this activity and our brain is confused and then we're having the wrong foods or the wrong whatever that's causing more problems and more stress and the stacking system and then the anxiety and then boom the migraines start in my case that's how they started after about two months after this began for me then i started getting explosive migraines because i was having so much shit like my chemical based multivitamin was even caused all these vitamins that would take all this health food has chemicals in it if you don't know how to eliminate 
the chemicals that are causing this shit. Get the Dizzy Cooks book, and I will provide the link, and start eliminating, because we're not all going to have the same triggers and the same from the same foods, so the book wasn't exact for me to follow, but I learned a lot and figured out which foods that I was eating were causing it for me based on help from that book. And little did I know, because I was eating tons of yogurt and I thought I was being healthy, that's just this is just an example. Little did I know until I read that book that yogurt is considered by the migraine association in general, this is a major migraine trigger, at least for some of us, because of live and active cultures that yogurt is made of. Live and active cultures causes migraines, some kind of that's the chemical process of yogurt that causes migraines in yo from yogurt. Then you have MSG products that lots of stuff have MSG in it. MSG is a whole list of whole list of names. These weird names. It's not on my oatmeal. My oatmeal. I was able to eat oatmeal every day, eliminate my migraines, and stick to oatmeal and other things. But I couldn't even have certain things like that multivitamin. I have to get my vitamins from food now. That multivitamin is condensed with many chemicals that are considered MSG. It's not just vitamin, uh, multivitamin with vitamins in it. You look at the ingredient, the ingredients they make something like that. I'm starting with a multivitamin example with, for you guys, because you would think it's healthy, but meanwhile it has all these chemicals. And for people who are prone to migraines or vestibular migraines like us, we might have to eliminate it because it has ten things in it with weird names, weird named ingredients like, like carrageenan. That's a that's a fucking MSG. MSG is more than one thing. I just used to think it was salt. No. It's processed stuff that preserves the food from getting old, like from canned and packages and boxes. This is our processed food. It has to be preserved in that box or can. It comes with many chemicals besides the whole the wholesome ingredients. It's not just oatmeal. No, oatmeal is just oatmeal. My bad. What I mean is something like a Twinkie or Hostess cake. This is really processed. It's not just cake. It's a bunch of chemicals so they could create this scrumptious yummy thing but let me tell you it didn't grow from the ground it didn't come from the planet itself it was man-made so i quit a lot of that stuff just to make a long story short eating oatmeal or salmon and chicken plain chicken has done me a lot better than eating processed shit even if it was healthy for me i had to eliminate my insure shakes like that shake i was telling you that i was drinking that thing i had goodbye thought it was a healthy thing oh why not they use it in the, for, for patients in the hospitals that drink it because they need nutrition and they can't uh, maybe swallow whole food at that point. And, and they do, yeah, but that it's temporary or, or maybe they're not living on it. I was drinking it every single fucking morning. And why? I wasn't in the hospital. I, would, I didn't, that made my migraines reach. I, I, and that's when it started. One day I was having a vitamin. Boom. Oh, what the fuck? Even my neck, I felt it explosive. Then, at that point, I couldn't drink my shakes anymore. I must have caused something to fucking happen. Between all the cocktail of vitamins I was having, shakes, organic food, uh, sure, health food store, they're tricking you. Read the fucking label. Okay, this is just water. One ingredient, stick to the short list. Big changes happen. My dizziness, goodbye. My dizziness dissipated. Little by little, I took away the MSG. I took out the freaking stuff with the chemicals. I started eating foods that were very basic. And the dizziness, the 24-7 dizziness. And I'm still eating good stuff. I'm enjoying my food. Like I said, check check out that cookbook. And another book. Heal Your Head. The, the, the title. We all posted that book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link in there too. Uh, for And the Dizzy Cook. From that book that went through what we're going through. Who cured herself with the proper food. And uh, diagnosis, of course, and even had to be on medication for a while. And I'll talk about that in a second. She had to do a lot of things that we're trying to figure out here, going through some of the same symptoms. And she figured it out and she put it all in a book. She's been through all this torment and suffering years before this became a thing on paper and books or the Internet. She's like one of the those people who shine the light so we could recover much quicker. Thank God for her going through it for us now we're getting her advice in this book and she refers this other book heal your head by dr Bushols from the uh 
Oh, the John Hopkins medical team, uh, you'll see the information is legit. And this is like the best doctor appointment I've ever been to is in this book. It's like, why do I feel like I have sinus pressure? Do I have to treat sinuses? No, it was migraine. Why do I have ear fullness? Uh, do I have an ear infection? Is there something wrong with my ears? No. Head and ears are connected through blood vessels and nerves. The more you get migraines, the more damage your ears are getting. God, I said, holy shit. That's what my ears are feeling this because I'm getting migraines constantly. I go to this good, I go to this good, e this really good ENT one day that finally knew what the fuck I was talking about. Prints out this list. Of, he said, "You're already on this. This list of food from the Migraine Association, or some of it looked like it was straight from the Dizzy Cook, the Cook's book." And I said, "I'm already on this diet. I'm already starting to feel better." He said, "I appreciate that you have already done the research." He knew that vestibular migraines have a lot to do with diet and a lot of people that is their trigger they don't want to believe it he said he appreciates i'm one of those patients that come in there and have already acknowledged the diet because a lot of people are like nah it can't be my diet nah, nah, nah. hey believe me my blood pressure is better than ever i'm healthier than ever my blood work comes out great i got the mri and the mra just to, to rule things out thank god no brain tumors this dizziness was coming from my fucking food and by eating the better food I'm even getting healthier than I ever did in my life. And believe me, you're able to reintroduce the bad food eventually and see if it's still going to cause a problem. You might say, nah, fuck it, I'm not having that Twinkie ever again. Who you can live without certain things, but thank God I could eat pizza again. That's my favorite. I reintroduced it. Everyone has different triggers. Get the information, read the books, listen to the doctor who knows what they're talking about. Try different doctors. Next step. I was being so stubborn, took me so long, should have started earlier. Maybe I would have never got the migraines. Maybe the migraines would have never developed. And the neurologist said, why wait? Take this medication called amitriplin. And that was a game changer, my friends. Some of us need the medication. Yes, it's first good to figure out. Let's see what I can eliminate. Let's try the natural stuff. Let's try a supplement that works. Maybe magnesium without chemicals, if it's good for us. Maybe that'll maybe that'll clear me up. Maybe I won't need medication. Maybe my migraines will clear away. For me at this point, I had air pressure. Things that this good ENT said would happen to me happened. He said, you're going to get barometric, barometric pressure from weather changes. I said, I thought that was a myth. People say, oh, I got a headache from the weather. We must have a storm coming on. You know what barometric pressure is? It's basically a headache in your ears from the weather. I was getting more migraines because my ears were already damaged at this point. The, the bottom line is that myth wasn't a myth because one day I was walking down the street and all of a sudden I said, what the fuck is that? I was like, what? Ah, this is before I was on medication. I guess I it was just one too many migraines at that point. Now my ears were weak and now they were able to feel... All of a sudden, my human barometer, and I could feel these pressure changes in the air. Even when on sunny day, the pressure changes. Uh, we people like us feel it. Weird shit, right? Or like with, when we have all these balance problems, and if we have BPPV, or we diagnosed with something like that, where it's positions that when we feel off balance, you could be sitting on flat ground, right? And if it's off by a little bit, let's say you're sitting outdoors, you know the ground is off by a little bit not only are we human barometers all of a sudden we're like human contractors that do construction and can say i could feel we're off by a centimeter or two going this way because i feel like i'm being pulled and my i'm freaking falling off my chair everyone's looking at me like what the fuck are you talking about i say oh, never mind it's bppv it's my ears it's my vestibular system it takes time but things heal things get adjusted if you avoid the triggers do the exercises if that's what you need, like I needed. Sometimes the crystals just dissolve. If that was your problem, they dissolve on their own. But to give things a little help, to speed things in the right direction, no matter what has caused our initial dizziness and vertigo symptom, if we need to figure out eventually what happened, it'll take forever to figure out the source of where it's starting because all these doctors, they can't detect it. That's why we got to be our advocate advocate for ourselves, And we have to actually see what food is causing it. Eliminate it. See what exercise is helping us. Don't go too far. Figure it out. Feel it. 
Your balance is getting better. The dizziness is starting to go away. Hey, stick to that food. Something's going on. This is day. This is week number two, let's say. Let's say you're in week number two. You're feeling less dizzy because you eliminated. Hmm, it was that chocolate that I was eating every day. Whatever's causing it. Hey, you'll figure it out because it's your body. Take your time. Christmas tree theory. Take your time. Don't overdo things. Don't get frustrated. Air pressure will eventually go away. Head pressure will go away. Everything starts going away. Medication, fast speed, fast motion ahead now. Fast speed ahead. Let's fast forward ahead now. When I started taking the medication, the right medication for you uh, might be wrong for me, might be right for you. Figure it out with your neurologist because the right one for me was amitriptyline. Uh, I started with 10 milligrams. Well, actually, I took five the first week. was cutting it uh, to 10 slowly. So, uh, I think it's making things worse. No, no. Let's see. Maybe it's not. Sometimes you get a side effect and it goes away after a few days. Your body gets adjusted to it. You're gonna, you might have side effects. But if it's not severe, maybe it's going to go away in a few days. Sometimes that's what happens. Then all of a sudden, your body's adjusting to the medication. That's what was happening to me. I said, is it making worse? No, I'm starting to get better now. This is week number three or four. And then I, okay, here I am five months later. Now, how long I've been taking the medication? So now about three or four months. I don't know. And now I feel like uh, between that and eliminating the triggers, I feel like my old self again. This is a 20-minute video already, maybe more. Let me cut it out now. Uh, that was the long, short version of the story. And I uh, try to condense it, but um, you got the picture. Your body just has to readjust, heal, recover by you eliminating what needs to be eliminated and adding what needs to be added. If it was food that needed to be eliminated for me, hey, it worked. And adding the medication, hey, it worked. Adding the right medication. And during the process, my ears and head started getting better and my balance and everything else. Ta-da, like a magic trick. No, like a slow process, but your body will change. If it could get this bad, it could get good again. Body could go like that or it could go like this. You get my, get my drift? Your body doesn't have to stay. It's not going to be like this forever. You will heal. You will recover. God bless. I would make this a longer video, but there's more. Maybe I'll po post it on another. Check out the links. Start from there. And I'll tell you what. Your body won't stay like this forever, 24-7. You might be in it right now. I was suffering, but you take control, and you knock these motherfucking symptoms out. Peace.